day to you. This is Abuja Today, the program that lets you in on the happenings in Nigeria's capital city right here at your digital First Pan African News Network, TOS TV. I am Ruel Penawo. An FCT mobile court sitting at Eagle Square has convicted 72 violators of the COVID 19 health protocols. Idayat Akani, the chief magistrate, sentenced the violators to one week community service with an option of 2,000 naira fine each. Udeme Umana, the prosecutor, had told the court that the violators were caught without face masks, while some of them who had it did not wear it properly. Ikaro Atta, head media and enlightenment of FCTA COVID 19 enforcement team, said the administration desires to sustain the enforcement. Meanwhile, two commercial places, Karu, Paris Lounge, and Coolio, have been shot over violation of the COVID-19 safety guidelines by the operators. Information gathered revealed the Karu, Paris Lounge, and Coolio had large gatherings at night. A seal of order from the court was placed on both properties. Victims of the fire incident which occurred at Guarimpa neighborhood market on February 4, 2021 have asked Mala Mohammed Musa Bello, FCT minister, to assist on business resumption in the market. Aliyu Ali, secretary of the traders, made the call during the meeting on February 22nd in Abuja. According to him, the market located around Tipa Garage by 3rd Avenue, Guarimpa, used to be a source of fresh foodstuff, to, fresh fush, foodstuff pardon me, to the residents in the area and also a source of livelihood to many. He also said when the tragedy occurred, Dr. Ramatu Tijani Aliu, the FCT Minister of State, condoled with members who were injured and those who lost their lives. He further pled with the minister to assist as most of them and their families can no longer feed themselves. 17 people were injured when a trailer crashed at Abaji on the Abuja Lokoja Road on February 18, 2021. A witness said the accident happened around 8.34 p.m. when a DAF trailer with registration number T0129YB lost control while on speed and crashed into a ditch by the roadside. According to the witness, those who sustained injuries were sitting at the back of the articulated vehicle with loaded bags of rice. When contacted, ACC Abubakar Shehu Dogondaji, the Abaji unit commander of the FRSC, confirmed the accident, which he attributed to speeding and loss of control. He said the 17 people were taken to Abaji General Hospital. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has said it has banned open grazing in Abuja. Hazan Abubakar, the director of Abuja Environmental Protection Agency, said an earlier ultimatum issued to herders had expired and sanctions would be placed on offenders. Mohamed Bello, Minister of FCT, enforced a new team to constitute the directives and provided five locations for cattle grazing in Abaji, Kuje, and Kwali area councils. According to Yahaya Issa, the FCT chairman of the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, Makban, he said there was understanding that open grazing would stop in some areas within Abuja. He confirmed the ban was placed in consultation with his forum. Mr. Yahaya noted the ban will ensure that herders do not graze in sensitive areas except on the outskirts of the FCT. Also, sensitization has begun to inform Fulani herders on the new directive. There's more news from the federal capital city after the break. Malam Mohamed Bello, the Minister of the Federal Capital City, FCT, has given an assurance that the 13.25 km Apo Kashi Road will be completed and opened for public use before rain falls. The road, which contract was first awarded in 2011 to Kakata Engineering Limited, a company owned by Azibayola Robert, was designed to ease the gridlock at the Ayayaya Maraba section of the Abuja Kefi Road. That links Abuja Metropolis with some densely populated satellite towns like Kashi and Mararaba. 
The contract was awarded by the Federal Capital Development Authority, SCDA, at 6.4 billion Naira. Bello, while speaking on the delay in the completion of the project, attributed it to error of design. Now, when reminded that commuters face daily gridlock on the Abuja Kefu Road due to the delay in completion of the road, the minister said the initial challenges encountered by the contractor had been surmounted, adding that work was at an advanced stage. The minister said, and I quote, the Kashi Apo Road is a project that should have been delivered by now. One of the main challenges faced in that road had to do with error in the design, whereby a huge rock outcrop on the alignment of the road corridor became very difficult to be able to arrange. But we are very happy to say that it is now almost taken care of. I believe within a few months time, hopefully before the onset of the rains this year, that road will be opened. President Muhammad Buhari on February 22nd met with the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, at the Presidential Villa, Abuja, to discuss on the nation's security. He emphasized that the responsibility to secure the environment for Nigerians to earn their means of livelihood lies with the, with the three tiers of government, including the traditional rulers. According to Mr. Lawan, it is everyone's desire, including the government, to see farmers return to their farmland before the rain. He assured the nation will improve on security issues within the next two months. The Senate president also urged the political class to refrain from provoking comments that set various ethnic and religious groups against each other. On February 22nd, Senator Stella Odua, former Minister of Aviation, appeared at the Federal High Court of Buja over alleged financial impropriety. The Economic Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, claims Senator Stella Odua misused public funds during her service as a minister. In a 25 count presented against the former minister and eight others, they are accused of fraud and misuse of funds through the operation of unknown bank accounts. Hassan Liman, the prosecutor, told the court during the season that the EFCC wasn't able to serve the charges on the fifth and sixth defendants. At the resumed season, the prosecutor, Hassan Liman, told the court that the EFCC had been unable to serve the charges on the fifth and sixth defendants. Justice Inyang Eko, the presiding judge, adjourned the case for April 19, 2021. The case was formally set for February 22nd when the case was first reported on February 9th. By the minister, it was yet to be served the court proceedings. And that's all we have on Abuja today right here on your digital first Pan African News Network, TOS TV. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS TV Network. I am Ruel Panao. Bye for now.